Hi, I'm Tyler from MaxX Countertops, and uh, I'm here to show you basically how to make a countertop from start to finish. And we're going to show you uh, every last little detail that goes into making our own countertops here at MaxX. And uh, you'll find uh, that if you use our method, you'll have an excellent quality product in the end. So, uh, some of the things that we'll need, uh, that you'll need as well if you're going to build a countertop, whether it's in your garage, or your workshop, or in your home, is uh, you're going to need first of all a sheet of melamine and melamine is a very interesting product in the sense that it has a very smooth finish and when we lay concrete up against it whether it's on the base here or on the inside of the forms uh, the concrete releases off it and ba basically it doesn't stick to it and that's exactly what you're going to do is you're going to cut your melamine in strips inch and a half uh, wide so that this is an inch and a half deep and that's how thick your actual countertop will be when it's finished. How do we get these forms onto the piece of melamine? Well there is a little bit of a trick behind it so uh, we want to show you that so that it makes the job a little bit easier. So we take the form obviously we screw them on to the bottom piece of melamine but the very first thing that we do is we take our drill and uh, we of course don't use this drill we use a drill press with a jig so that we get right in the very center of this piece of melamine which is five uh, eighths thick. But we need to make a pilot hole and what we use is a 3 16 inch bit and we drill through so I'm just going to do this and show you exactly how we do it. We go right in the center of the piece of wood and we drill through clean out the hole and that hole is basically the, the thickness of this screw and this screw is inch and three quarters. So it's just gonna go into this base material by a quarter of an inch, three eighths of an inch, just enough to grab this form and really suck it right to the, the, the base of the, or the table that we're using. Screeding is when we fill it up basically with all of the concrete in here and we're just taking off the excess. Uh, this screeding tool here will not hit any of the, the screws that you put in there because they've been countersunk that way. Makes it much, much easier, makes the back not do this every time you hit something that's that's up a little higher than than the actual top of the form. So this is going to be the finished uh, level of the whole back of the countertop, which is very very important that we that we do that. The next thing that we do to make our job a little easier, as well, after we get it all screwed down, is we take some tape. This is a simple uh, hockey tape. It's thick. It's uh, it's it's hard to rip and tear and its its purpose is not to make the screeding easier. It has one simple purpose. We just put it on. It doesn't take very much time, but it saves a lot of time. And its purpose is to make sure that when we put the concrete in the form, the concrete does not go into the head of the screws, because if it does, you're going to have a problem taking your forms off. So, okay. So we've got this all taped up so that the concrete doesn't go into the screw holes. Now what we're going to do, just for added precaution so that the concrete really releases off of here when we take the forms off and it doesn't stick to the forms, is we're just going to put a little bit of olive oil on the forms and on the base. So uh, you don't need very much, just a little bit. And then just evenly just coat every last little bit. This does uh, as well something else. It cleans up any dust or anything that might be in the form. You get it on your cloth. And then you just simply wash out your cloth after you're, you're done. So now that uh, we've oiled it up and we're ready now to finally put our concrete in to the form, I'll just uh, bring a little bit over here to show you the consistency of the concrete that we're going to be putting into the form. You notice it's not running out of my hand, it's not slopping around here. It's nice and tight. You can actually make a nice little tight ball with it and it holds together very, very well. So that's the kind of uh, consistency that we want. So what we do is we usually start right around the edges and uh, since we're going to be putting bull nose, cutting bull nose into the, the edges after it's dried, we like to have a little bit of, of a nice solid edge of this material all the way around. So we try to build it out about an inch all the way around. And it goes relatively quickly. We just start slapping it in there. 
We don't want all of these pieces to be the same size because then it starts to look too uniform and it doesn't have uh, the characteristics of something that's natural. So this side is going to be the front side or the face. And the harder you pack it down, the less the grain will be. Something as well that you need to keep in mind is the corners. You really want to pack these corners nice so that you get a, when you finish it with the tool or the diamond bit, it makes a nice corner. So as you see, we've, we've covered basically the whole bottom of the form, which is going to be the face. Remember that. We've uh, created a, a good one inch uh, border all the way around here so that we can bullnose it with no problem. So basically we've got uh, all of this concrete covering the face. We've now cut this piece of reinforcement so that it goes in there so that it makes it nice and strong. Uh, if there was a sink that was going in this particular vanity, what we would do is put some uh, strong 3 8 re-rod in on both sides because of course if you take out the sink here, it takes a part of the strength. And so we would have to put full length re-rod uh, going on both sides of those weak points so that you don't get any cracks. Does this. So let's get the concrete in here and just sort of pack it down. Basically we filled the cavity here, the rest, the back it'll be uh, of the countertop and now we're going to screed it. So thankfully we have our tape on our screw heads here like we talked about and we're just simply going to move back short. And this is just getting the excess off. Be a little quick and it brings up some of the Portland to the surface. And bring it back a little bit here like this. Makes it a little easier to push it. You can see that we're nice and level all the way around with the form. We're not higher. Let's just see if we can make the, look, the back look a little nicer. So you can see it's getting a smoother. And just remember, the more water that you put into the concrete, the weaker it becomes. So we want this as dense and as hard as possible so that it'll last a lifetime. So basically that's it. We've, uh, we've finished it off. Uh, we've floated the back so it's nice and smooth. And what we're going to do is we're going to let it set up for a couple of hours, two or three hours. Then we're going to come back out with this trowel, flat trowel, and just brush over again with it to uh, it, it'll polish it in its own little way to just the backside just to make it look uh, good and neat and clean. Uh, we're going to cover it over so we don't want to lose the moisture too quickly because then we end up with cracks. So we're going to cover it over with some plastic, keep the moisture that's there in it so that it dries out nice and slowly at a good rate. We'll come back to see it in three days and uh, we'll have a countertop. We just finished the concrete vanity uh, a minute ago that you saw. Uh, but uh, this is a new one that we had made a few days ago. Of course it has the sink in it. It also has the re-rod in it that we talked about uh, with the other one. We want to get a bull nose on here and what we have to do to have the bull nose because it's a rotor bit with diamond chips in it is we have to make these surfaces all the way around here because the bit rides on these surfaces. We have to make them as smooth as possible. So that's what we're going to do. We're not going to take it up to a polish. Uh, because we can go all the way up to 3,000 grit, but uh, we're going to use these diamond resin uh, pads to uh, at least get the, the roughness away so that our, our rotor bit can run across there smoothly. So what we'll do is I, we might as well get started. Uh, we're going to need some safety glasses. And if you like water, you'll enjoy this. So I hope you don't get wet. Turn a little bit of water on, you see it. The grinder isn't working very fast. We're just going to start right here and we're going to work all the way around and then we're going to do the, the top piece to get it rid of that little bit of residue. So we have the surface around the edges cleaned up from the slurry that was put on there. It needs another coat of slurry uh, to fill in the smaller little gaps and crevices. 
which will just give it a nice marble look on the surface. We also uh, sanded the edge so that the rotor bit, which is this, this is a, a diamond rotor bit and it's going to give it a full bull nose so it's completely rounded. This is another one, uh, this slurry has been put on this one, so uh, this is uh, basically at the finishing stage here. And what we're going to do is, uh, of course it's been bullnosed here on three sides. We have to, and this is probably the hardest part of the whole project, because it's a lot of hand work. And these are diamond pads, hand pads that you can use. You can soak them in water if you want to keep them wet, or uh, you can go dry as well. And each one of these pads, a uh, different color represents 60? a different And uh, it's an, just a nice rollover motion here that you're going to be doing. And you're just trying to take out any lines or imperfections that are in this full nose before you put the uh, wet grinder on it at the 800 uh, grit. And what you do is you just keep going over this with this one and then you go over the same pattern with this one and gradually up to 500 grit. We've just completed the edges with the hand sander and it's taken probably a close to an hour, an hour and a half to do that because you're going step by step 150 then up to 300 then 500 then a thousand grit and you can even go up further. So now it's time to do the surface, find out where the imperfections are, we'll polish it up to close to 3000 grit that should start really putting a sheen on this and you'll be able to see it as we progressively go through. We're going to start out with a 200 resin diamond uh, pad on our wet grinder first. We brought it up to 3000 grit which uh, you feel the surface of this countertop is very 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 smooth just like uh, glass. So what we want to do, just like any other countertop we would get, uh, whether it's granite, whether it's marble, uh, we want to put a sealer on it. So uh, I'll just show you how to do that. You need a clean, clean cloth, and it doesn't take that much sealer. And you just want to make sure that you get the whole thing covered evenly. So the sealer has dried. We're just going to burnish it up here, full speed. So as you can see, the finished product, it's been sealed three times, uh, stain resistant surface top that will last forever, beautiful uh, texture in the way that it was designed and created. Uh, it's ready to be installed. You will be able to show you a picture of it installed on a cabinet or a van bathroom vanity here and you'll be able to see that on the website and something that will last forever and that you'll be proud of.